All right, welcome everybody, fellow artists. And yes, I'm talking to you, all my students. You are all artists. And uh, I hope you're leaving this class with a lot more artistic technical skills. And uh, today we're gonna be talking about cinematics in UE4 are handled through something called matinee. So the idea behind matinee is using a timeline based system to animate cameras to control animations to control effects um, and a whole sort of other really nifty features. So uh, in, in a simple sense, it's how we can control any kind of cutscene or any kind of uh, theatrical, um, not theatrical, uh, cinematic experience for uh, our players. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and jump in. I just have the simple third person template and I imported my walker so we at least have something to look at. And um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And to do this, um, we come up here to the very top. There is a matinee clapperboard. And if I click on the little arrow, it'll say add matinee. So I'll add matinee. And before we take a look at this, I'm going to look in the scene. And now I have this little node, the same clapperboard. And it's just our matinee node. Uh, this is new to UE4. I think before we had a matinee. Um, they wouldn't give you an actual actor within your level to select. Uh, you just have to look in under matinee. So if you have multiple matinees, um, what you can do is actually place this towards where it's actually relevant. So say you have a cinematics going on over here so that's initiated by a trigger box or something. Uh, you can keep it kind of organized by leaving that over there and maybe having another one when the player starts the level over here. Um, so it's just helping us stay a little bit better organized. So now I'm going to go back into my matinee viewer. I can, I can do that just by clicking on the matinee once again, and you'll see that it says matinee actor dash zero, which is the name of our standard matinee actor, which was created. <laughs> so it's already open. And here we go. Uh, and you should notice that um, today's video will be much smoother, and that is because I'm using a new function by NVIDIA GeForce, which is called uh, Shadow Play, which is basically screen capture using um, your video card hardware, which is really interesting. So uh, if you're considering upgrading and you're wondering whether I should go with NVIDIA or AMD, uh, one thing to consider about NVIDIA is its technologies, which go a long way. So if you spend a little extra money on an NVIDIA card, you get really cool features um, like this one here. All right, so back into Matinee Editor. So we can see that it looks a little confusing with nothing in it, actually. It actually seems a lot more confusing <laughs> with nothing in it. Sorry for the loud noise. It's my cat playing around. Um, but if we look at the top, we'll, it's starting to kind of make sense when you look at these features. So it's play button. We have a loop button, stop reverse this is a create camera node um, we have a curve editor which is this box right here so these pertain to those um, and then we have a couple more advanced controls which I doubt we'll get into right now um, but and then we also have uh, very specific curve controls right here and if we scroll down to the second panel right here we will see that it is labeled tracks so this is where we'll add um, specific tracks, kind of like if you ever worked in Final Cut Pro or if you worked in Premiere and in any kind of video editor or I even um, if you worked in Flash before, uh, everything's broken up into tracks to make it easier for us to kind of make sense of it all. Um, so if you have one for a camera, there's one going to be specific for cameras, one for skeletal meshes for character animations and that sort of thing. Uh, you can even uh, animate lights particle systems, sounds, and events. So the first thing we want to do is add a camera. So 
the final project is going to require you to do a fly through through your level. So um, we'll definitely have to make a camera which we can control and animate through the level. And uh, I think we're also going to add a second camera so you can switch back and forth to do a couple more advanced uh, cinematic kind of uh, give it a more a more uh, high polished look I think by adding a second camera. So the first thing to do is add our first camera. Uh, so you can do that by coming down here into the tracks and right clicking over here and we want to do a new camera group. Um, before I do that I want to try hitting this camera button and see ah yes so if you hit this camera button it does the same thing it'll add a new camera group. Um, <coughs> so it's up to you. You could either click on this button I made it really simple for you or you can right click and add a camera here. I'm gonna use the button and I'm gonna call this fly through cam one. And when I hit enter you'll see that now I have a new track. I actually have three new tracks on my uh, my track board down here. And what you can see is that there is one that controls the whole cam or one that is classified as the whole camera. There's one down here for movement, which is going to be mostly relevant to us. And there's a field of view angle, which is just another uh, feature within the camera. So let's take a look at our camera real quick. You can see that it placed the camera exactly where I was looking last in the level. So if I back up, you'll see that the camera is right where my viewer was when I created it. And the really cool thing about UE4 um, is that it gives us this nice little box here whereas in Unreal 3 uh, it, this was detached and it was kind of it was hard to negotiate what you're doing unless you had um, a second monitor uh, this just makes it easier for us so whenever I move this camera around you can see that the view in that viewport is changing of course it's not super high res but if you wanted to, you could uh, detach this and uh, get a, f a full view. Or, with this selected, you could right click and then lock viewport to camera um, actor. So now we're looking straight through. And if I did that too fast, I'll, I'll go through it again. So I, I'm in my scene and I want to look through this camera. All I have to do is select it. I come over here to the arrow and I look under lock viewport to actor and then selected actor camera actor. So now I'm looking right through the camera you can see that it's got a new aspect ratio which is 16 by 9 I believe. Let me full screen this. Yeah so it is 16 by 9 by default and of course you can start changing a whole um, host of things everything from field of view to aspect ratio. So if you wanted to make it super um, anamorphic, kind of like a, a Lawrence of Arabia type deal, <laughs> you could totally go with that. Um, there's a, uh, a few more things. You can actually control post effects through the camera directly, um, but I think what we'll do is stick to camera volumes and then use our post-processing volumes, which is these invisible boxes. Oh no, this is a light mask. But we'll create volumes that can control all those things so that if we want to, we can switch in between separate volumes depending on uh, what kind of atmosphere we're trying to portray. So uh, I'm looking through my camera. This is really cool. It's nice because it's in 16 by 9 no matter what the viewport is like. So you're getting an exact uh, view of what uh, the camera is looking at which is nice and of course if you hit the G key you'll go out of game mode into the view mode and now you're getting exactly what the camera will be seeing at runtime so I'm going to go back under my matinee editor and I'm going to start talking about some of these features so we look under the fly through camera one which is the one we were looking at um, you'll see that our movement tab um, is the second one and it, this is the one that we're going to be using uh, the most here 
Um, so let's go ahead and start adding in some keys. Um, so adding keys through this um, track editor is very similar to how we were doing it in Maya and how we do it in video editing. Um, everything is controlled by time. So you can see down here at the very bottom there are these numbers here and these are actually seconds. So I can scroll, scroll, scroll and I'm going to create a 20 second clip. I'll leave it right there. So what I was do just doing right now is grabbing this red one and grabbing it all the way to the 20. So the red one is the bounds. So it's basically saying um, from the start of this red one to the end of this red one is um, the hard bounds. So nothing can exist outside of this red and nothing can exist before it. The green one itself is the influence of the camera. So I'm going to want this to be down to the very end as well because I'm going to be influencing this camera for the entire duration of this sequence. So you can scroll in and scroll out by holding the oh actually you don't even have to hold the alt key <laughs> you can just scroll in with the scroll wheel and um, you know this will become more useful when we're doing uh, longer sequences or when you're doing your own games and it's much easier to see uh, certain frames or certain exact seconds when you're uh, scrolled in so just keep that in mind um, and the next thing we're going to do is add a frame so you can see that under camera movement uh, in this little portion right here under the actual track there is a little red triangle and you can see when I click on it this key movement zero appears so what this means is at zero seconds which you can see down here in the green um, there is a key so what I can do is move my camera to where I want this key to start. And that is basically going to be its begin point. So the next thing I want to do is drag my cursor over here. So this is the selection uh, cursor, very similar to, once again, all the video editing stuff. And I'm going to drag it to like uh, four seconds. And then with the movement tab selected, I'm going to hit enter. So when I hit enter, that adds a brand new key. And you can also do this with the add key button, but uh, I suggest using the actual physical keys on your keyboard because that'll save you a lot of time. So if I scroll down to here, we haven't really done anything yet. And the reason that is is because um, we haven't moved the camera from the first second to the fourth second. So I'm going to move this forward, and we'll see if that made a difference. So what I'm going to do is actually move this down here so that we can see our viewport and our editor down here. And look at that. Right away we start getting some really cool animation. So I can actually use these play tools now. If I hit the play button, Very cool. So I'm going to hit stop and I'm going to add a new key that goes in at maybe another two seconds forward. So at six seconds, I'm going to hit enter once more to add a new key. And then I'm going to come under the window. I'm going to move this to the side real quick. And I'm going to position this down here. So it's like a pan and then a scroll, oh, not a scroll, but we're going to get real close to the ground there. I think that'll be a, a cool effect. So now let's scroll back. Oop, it didn't seem to take that time. So let's try that again. I have to make sure that I have my key selected. And I'm going to move around. So you're starting to see that. Um, we get this yellow line appearing on the screen and you might be wondering what that is exactly. So I'm going to explain that more right now. Um, first thing we have to do is get this out of the way and let's take a look 
at our normal editor view. So I'm going to come to lock under lock to viewport to actor and unlock my camera. And I'm going to scroll out, <coughs> scroll out, and you can see that we're starting to see this line again. The really cool thing is that this line is our literal track, the track which the camera follows on our animation. Very, very cool. And you can see this big pink box is actually the field of view for this camera. So it's a little redundant because we have this actual view down here, so we don't necessarily need this um, this box, but it's nice to have regardless. Just that extra visualization. So something really, really cool, and this is something that I absolutely love about um, the tools in UE4, and Unreal 3 actually had this as well, is if I wanted to change something about this animation. Like I want the camera to pitch down halfway between my first key and this four second key. So I want a new key halfway in between and I want it to go down and then back up. I could do that very 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 easily. So I can go under two and I'm still under the movement so I can just hit the enter and that gives me a brand new key. And what I can actually do is grab this little node and move it down. So you see what it did there? It's actually moving the curve for me. So whenever I click on one of these little nodes, it'll move. Oh, that's not a big node. Uh, whenever you click on one of these big nodes, it'll smash the camera to that uh, point in time. And then you can move it. And then you'll start to see that this animation curve follows. Now it's got this like bob going on. You'll also see that not only can you move, but you'll also get this curve editor. So the same curve editor that we've seen in the past, um, all we have to do is click on this and drag it and you'll start to see that we get much more interesting control over this curve. So one other feature is if I cycle through my different options. I can change rotate. I'm going to turn my snapping off because snapping doesn't really do us much good in camera animations. So now, not only does it move, but once it gets to that point, it also rotates. So it's up to you to find out your own kind of workflow. Um, I'm, I come from a film background, so I prefer to see everything from the camera. And what I do is, after I've set up my animation, I will come back into the curves, and I will see if I have any problems. Um, so say I'm animating a camera to fly like through the legs of this walker, and I accidentally clip, so my camera runs through the geometry. Well, what I can do is just grab or make a new key where it's starting to clip and I can just move it down a little bit and make sure it doesn't clip. Um, so it, it's just a nice way of editing the entire curve of this animation without doing too much damage to um, uh, the entire flow. So, let's talk about adding a new camera. Oh, um, actually before I do that, let me mention the uh, the curve editor. Um, so this is, I can't remember if this is uh, new or not to Unreal 4. I don't remember it in the past and that might be because I never used it. Um, <laughs> but very similar to how we can graph out our curves in uh, the particle animation system, uh, we can come to our movement tab down here and you'll see that there's a tiny, tiny little graph down here. And if I click on that, 
Ah, hmm. uh, I might be lying. I suppose you can't actually control animation through the graph. Ah, uh, we'll use that a little later in another video when we're doing some more advanced stuff. We'll stick to basics for now. Um, so if you're going to be animating the curves, uh, stick to the 3D view. It'll save you a lot more time. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and add a new camera this time. So I'm going to close up this fly through camera by doing that, just clicking on this little arrow. And the next thing I want to do is add a director group. So if I right click, I will see at the very, very bottom there is an add new director group. If I click on that, it'll actually give you a separate box and a separate timeline. Because what the director is doing is actually telling when we're going to be looking through each camera. So this will be more obvious when we add a second camera. But the important thing to remember is, well actually, first important thing to remember is what we're looking through. So when we look down here, um, we don't have our camera selected. So we don't get that nice little viewport. Um, but you can actually view the viewport by clicking on this tiny little camera right here. And you can see now I'm looking straight through the camera. If I move while I'm in the camera, it's going to change the animation. You have to remember that. Um, I don't believe, if you're not on a key, then it won't. But if you happen to be right on top of a key and you move the camera in this mode, you will affect the animation. So you have to remember that. Uh, but like I was saying, the first thing to remember is that there is a difference between looking through this camera and looking through this director group. So let's go ahead and add a new camera. So I'm going to click this camera. Actually, maybe I could do a demo here. Ah. So there used to be a difference between cameras and camera groups. I suppose there isn't any difference now. So I'm going to call this fly through cam 2. All right. So I'm going to get out of this view by hitting this button. And I want to grab my fly through camera too. It happens to be exactly where the other camera was because we were looking through that camera. Um, so it might have looked like there was nothing there at first. And actually, I'm going to do a little bit of, um, of window moving. So the really nice thing about UE4 is that the entire UI is dockable and it's customizable. Um, so no matter what you're doing, you can optimize your workflow. So I'm going to do that by clicking on this little arrow to bring up this viewport box. And I'm going to click it and grab it and just drag it. And that drops it off um, detached from the rest of it. And I can just snap that to my right or my left and snap matinee to my right. And I actually want to give myself a little bit more room to work in matinee. So here we go. So now I have my cameras and my views, and then I have my cameras and all of this control down here. So just like with our other camera, we need to find the first key, and I can uh, do that by clicking on the key itself. And I want to set this up somewhere different. I don't want to break the 180 mark, so I'm not going to bring it to the next side, but I want to bring this, make this like a wider shot. Maybe this will be our establishing shot. OK. So this is where our camera is going to originate, because we have our key selected, and this is where the camera is. So next thing we could do is pull forward a little bit. And let's say, so we have this first camera going into this key at what point? Four seconds. So I want to select this camera. So what I just did there is I selected the little node on the track so that I could find exactly where 
that um, that key is. And now I can just go to my movement on my second camera, hit enter, and now I add a key here. So I, what I'm basically doing is saying, I want my first camera to animate from zero seconds to four seconds. So zero seconds to four seconds. And then what I want to do is switch to this camera at four seconds to, I don't know, maybe eight seconds. Uh, so I'm on my movement track, I'll hit enter. And let's say I'm just panning and moving across. I'm going to make it a little bit longer, actually. Let's make this 12 seconds. I'm going to hit enter once more. And I'm just going to bring the camera even further. And if you wanted to make this really smooth, because now I have where I want my camera to originate and where I want it to end, um, I can actually just take this middle key and delete it because I don't really need it to define anything in the middle. I don't need it to stutter. Uh, I just want one really smooth animation. All right. So I'm going to deselect my camera so I can just uh, look around. So you now you see I have two cameras. I have the first one that we made and our second one that we made. And now I want to switch back and forth between the two in our director group. So if I click on my director group right now, I'm actually not going to see anything because I don't have anything assigned to it yet. That's what we're going to do right now. So the next thing I want to do I suppose I can just do enter. So I want to add a new key for the director group. So th the way I do that is just like adding a key before. I press enter. And you're going to see that I have this new little box that appears for me. That's going to say cut to group. Um, and you can say cut to <laughs> cam one, cam two, or the group itself. Um, the director group, that would be kind of strange. Um, I'm going to do cam one because uh, I want that to be the first camera that we look through. I'm going to hit enter. And what that did is created a little green box over here. And what this is, is this green box represents uh, looking through camera one. Um, so what it does by default is go through the entire, um, the entire length of the sequence. So now if I click on this director box, should be yes so I have to hit play to view through it it's just gonna play through camera one now it's actually not doing a whole lot so it's not very interesting um, but the next thing we can do is start looking through our second camera and we're gonna do that at this keys so I'm gonna I suppose I have to have that open to select the key I'm going to select this key so I know I'm exactly right there. And now I'm going to come up into the director group. I'm going to add a new key. And I want to add fly through camera 2 this time. So you can see now that it goes from fly through camera 1, green, to fly through camera 2, which is like this magenta. Um, so if we're looking through our director group, which we are, I'm going to go ahead and just play it. You can see it goes from one to the other. So this is how you start setting up uh, more interesting complex shots. So say I want the animation for fly through camera 2 to end right here. I'm going to add a new key and go back to camera group 1. And there we go. So it's where we last, last left it. Um, the last key that we got for camera one is all the way back at six seconds so what we can do is select this camera and set up a new shot where we want this camera to start so let's say I want to do like a weird pan down something like this so I want this camera animation to start right here um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter for my movement. Oh, sorry. I have to select my movement track um, and 
hit enter. So we're actually viewing through this camera so we can see the whole thing. Um, the really interesting thing uh, to keep um, to remember is that uh, we have camera one right here, which we're viewing through the director group. But once we get through to the fly through camera two, we're switching views. So from here to here, from the time we're not looking through camera one, we can do any kind of crazy animations to get to our next location where we start viewing through it again. So if that means you have like three, like a uh, half a second from this camera needing to be where it was last to where it needs to be next, you can absolutely just animate a really, really, really fast movement for it. Because we're not going to be viewing through it, it doesn't really matter. And in some cases, you might want to add another camera, like a third camera. Um, but for now, I'd like you guys to kind of just play around with the negative animation space for this. By negative animation space, I mean the, the animation that the camera is doing when it's not being viewed through. So I'm going to click on my director group again and see what we have now. Oh, that's right, I forgot to set a second key for our, our camera group one. So I want it to pan down. And to kind of get a feel for the amount of time I want it to have on that, I'm gonna hit play and say, right about now, I want it to be done with its animation. And that's just like a feel, uh, like a gut feeling for how long I want it to last. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. I'm just gonna try that and I'm just gonna pan down and now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna view I'm still through the director group so I can just hit play I'm gonna hit select this and hit the G key so we're not seeing those tracks and yeah that's a little that's a little fast so if we wanted to change that it's easy enough all we have to do is select this little key Is it the shift key? Ah, control. Sorry about that, guys. So if you hold down the control button and you select on your key, you drag it forward, or drag it back, and you're actually moving uh, where in time this key is. So if I move it really far forward, that camera, camera animation of panning down is going to be much, much slower now. <coughs> so I can go back to the beginning of my animation and I just want to view how long that pan is now ah yes much less jarring but you could probably make that even slower if you wanted to um, so yeah let's say that's done uh, it's not very interesting at the moment um, but say you've had a lot more time in the system and you set up some really really cool animations and shots and uh, you want to start adding uh, some more features um, uh, if you right click on the director group or on any group for that matter you'll see that there's a bunch of different um, a bunch of different tracks that you can add so I'm gonna select the camera group or the director group rather and I want to look for a fade track this is the one I'm looking for so I'm gonna click on the fade track and you'll see that it gives me a brand new track right here and what fade is is uh, like a fade in fade out so similar to like a dissolve in uh, video animation or video editing I'm going to scroll in a little bit so I can see more what I'm doing. So I'm going to select the track and I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to do maybe like a half second fade. So if you look through it now, the fade isn't working. So you have to wonder like why is it not working? Um, well the reason is because we didn't set a value for the fade yet.
Um, so let me get that out of the way. So if you want to set a value for something like a fade, you have to find the 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 key for it, and then you have to. I guess you do have to select it first. You select it first, and then you right click on it, and then you get a couple of options. There's um, interpolate mode, set time, set value, and delete keys. So if you want to delete a key uh, by right clicking, you can do that also. But what I want to do is set the value. So I'm going to click on that real quick. And I want to set the value from zero, which is not affecting anything at all, to one. So now you can see that at the very beginning of my sequence, at frame zero or second zero, so I should make that distinction. Um, because uh, video games are on a variable frame rate, uh, so you know, from one platform to the other, one person's computer to, you know, if someone's using it on their phone or whatever, there's going to be different frame rates. So instead of animating on frames like we would on uh, a video, we're doing it in actual seconds um, so that it's consistent from one platform to the next. So if I say uh, frames, um, that's my mistake. That's uh, from years of editing. So now you can see that when you scroll back, now after adding this fade, because this key is still set to zero, which means it's from this point to the next, it'll be from one influence to zero influence. So basically fade in. So it's a little short. So I'm going to zoom out. Hold down control, move it forward. And one more camera. Let's say I want my my end fade to start right about here. So I'm gonna grab my fade channel and I'm gonna click on that. and I'm going to grab my timeline to the very very end and hit enter for a new key and this time I have to right click on this key set the value and I'm going to set it to 1 easy so we can play the whole thing I'm sure you guys are kind of bored of this so Let's just say you uh, you know what it looks like at this point. Ooh. And fade out. All right. So this is very, very rough. It obviously doesn't look very good. Um, so when you guys are doing this, um, spend much more time kind of um, setting up your shots. Uh, what I would recommend is finding uh, a video source, uh, any kind of reference that uh, you find really um, appealing to you. Uh, it could be like commercials, because commercials spend a lot of time on their um, on their camera shots and they do a lot of panning around to, to kind of show off objects, um, which is what you're going to be doing. You're going to be showing off your level and your walker. Um, so yeah, look through commercials, uh, maybe look through other uh, video game stuff, um, and just find some kind of cinematography, cinetog <laughs> cinematography techniques which are appealing to you and try and emulate those in Unreal. Uh, this system is actually very, very powerful. We only briefly touched on it. Um, so, oh, here's another way to do the fade a little bit easier. Um, so you can see that there's actual curve for this. Actually, I think I do remember this being in Unreal 3 now. Um, and if you wanted to change the curve of this, you can um, select it and uh, make it linear change the curve sorry so I was getting back into my spiel about uh, cinematography um, yeah find something that is appealing to you try and emulate it through the system because it is really powerful and um, nowadays I've been seeing articles about people that are doing entire because the processing power of Unreal 4 is so powerful um, people are going to start creating entire movies within the the system so 
uh, imagine this <laughs> being a video editing platform for an entire movie, you know, uh, any kind of CG movie. Uh, if you look at the graphics possible in Unreal 4, they're basically matching what we were seeing about um, 10 years ago in the video industry. I'm thinking about um, uh, Final Fantasy Spirits Within. At least came out in like 2001. Yeah, 2001. Um, and if you ever seen this movie, I'm sure you're very aware of it. Um, Worn out. Oh, at least ripped off the <laughs> Gears of War trailer. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, if we look at the kind of graphics technology in this movie, which is literally top of the line, like advanced, super high end graphics uh, rendering back in the day uh, you know video games are starting to look this good and actually starting to surpass this in many ways so um, people are gonna start making movies in this thing so keep to those standards you know make this look as good as something that you'd see in a movie or something that you'd see on TV um, it is powerful enough to do it and uh, it's really not that hard. I, I know I, I say that coming from like a film background, but it's I think it's really intuitive and it's really fun. They make it easy for you, and uh, all the tools are there. If you'd like to learn more tools, uh, you can email me. Uh, but you know, I'll show you one last one just for fun. So let's say we want to add a uh, a track to animate a light. <coughs> Um, well, let's add a new lighting group. I'm going to call this, we'll call it test light because I haven't actually done this yet in UE4. So I have a new group that controls my lighting. I have one that controls movement, intensity, light color, radius, all kind of controls that we'd normally see in uh, in uh, you know the details panel you know what actually I'm gonna save this I think I'm gonna do a supplementary video um, which will go into a few other things uh, I think this video is probably already long enough um, so this is all the basic stuff that it'll take to get you animated through your level <coughs> and uh, to get through the next level it'll get you through I'll do lighting um, I'll go through skeletal meshes so we'll do one it talks about animating our walkers and putting them up on the timeline and um, maybe some sound effects and particle effects as well. So stay tuned for that.